The only viable monosomy is known as Turner syndrome, and it occurs in females who, instead of two X chromosomes, have one X chromosome. It can occur if portions of one X chromosome are significantly deleted so that only one functional one remains. The vast majority of major chromosomal abnormalities do not make it to term, and as I mentioned before, Turner syndrome is the only monosomy with any degree of survival after birth. Individuals with Turner syndrome typically have short stature and a webbed neck extending from the base of the skull and ears down to the points of the shoulders, lymphedema in the limbs, swelling, and then a wide chest with widely spaced nipples. There are also absences of ovaries, and frequently you see amenorrhea, or failure of the menstrual periods, to occur. The ovaries are often um, fibrous, called streak ovaries that are present, or altogether absent ovaries. Typically, these people have no major intellectual disability, and hormonal treatments or surgical treatments can deal with the other sequelae of Turner syndrome, giving normalcy and functionality to people with this condition. Kleinfelter syndrome is a trisomy wherein the affected individual is XXY. Because a Y chromosome is present, these individuals develop as male, and typically they only see problems develop around puberty, as masculine secondary sexual characteristics do not develop to the degree that would normally be expected. People with XXY are typically not mentally retarded or having any developmental delays associated with it, but the more copies of an X chromosome someone has due to very early non-disjunction events, the more likely developmental delays are going to be encountered. People with Kleinfelter syndrome will be sterile because the testes and the seminiferous tubules within them will atrophy and fail to get a lumen that can transport spermatozoa. They will frequently have gynomastia, where breast tissue develops in males, less body hair, decreased muscle growth, and increased height. Cognitive dis uh, impairment may occur, but as I mentioned before, doesn't tend to be strictly associated with Kleinfelter syndrome. Trisomy X, or women who are born with three copies of an X chromosome, tend to develop very typically of females and may be completely asymptomatic. Only karyotyping will eventually show that these people have three copies of the X chromosome. In terms of commonalities, they often are taller than average, have wide set eyes, and epicanthial folds, folds over the top of the eyelid, and there are usually no intellectual or developmental deficits associated with this condition and may be clinically unknown unless the person has genetic testing done. Jacob syndrome is another trisomy wherein the affected person is XYY. Because the Y chromosome is present, these people develop in a typically male pattern and are often asymptomatic, much as people with triple X syndrome. These boys will eventually develop increased height, but otherwise will develop normally, and there may be minor cognitive delays, but there's no consensus on whether that is linked with Jacob syndrome or not. XYY people have traditionally been described as aggressive, developmentally delayed, more likely to wind up in jail than others, but subsequent research has shown that this is really not a compelling link, and there may not be any sort of aggressive behavior caused by XYY trisomy. In addition to non-disjunction events during meiosis that cause problems in the germ cells, there can sometimes be non-disjunction events during mitosis. If this occurs while an embryo is growing, we can wind up with a non-disjunction event creating two separate genetic lineages within a single embryo, meaning part of the body will develop in one way with a separate genetic blueprint than another part of the body. This is known as mosaicism. It's very different from something called chimerism, although the two may manifest similarly with genetically distinct lineages appearing in different parts of the body. A chimera is when two blastocysts that would otherwise develop as completely distinct individuals fuse during very, er during very early development to create a single organism, but with cells from two separate sources. In addition to non-disjunction during mitosis or meiosis, portions of chromosomes can also be damaged. They can be struck off or otherwise badly damaged or fragile, leading to spontaneous abortion and occasionally to a viable offspring. In the case of cri du chat, or cry of the cat syndrome, there's a deletion on chromosome 5. Now, this has sometimes been described as a partial monosomy because it leaves a single, truly functional version of chromosome 5. 
children with this condition tend to have smaller facial characteristics, and you can see in the image that's associated with this, he has a very small mouth, so microstomia is present, and the reason this syndrome has the name that it does is that children with this condition, even immediately after birth, tend to cry in the way that's reminiscent of a kitten. So cry of the cat syndrome is because of this distinctive yowl that these children give very soon after they're born. Fragile X syndrome occurs because of a genetic problem within the X chromosome. An excessive number of nucleotide repeats, CGG, over and over and over, creates a very fragile portion of the X chromosome. The gene in which this occurs is one that's involved with allowing neurons to connect with other neurons effectively, and therefore, the problems that manifest generally manifest in neurologic ways. It affects males more often than females because males have one and only one copy of the X chromosome available, although females can be carriers and occasionally symptomatic for fragile X syndrome. These children typically have protruding ears, a relatively elongated face, hypermobile digits, and cognitively, there's gonna be some issues involved with processing of information, and sometimes these are going to appear autistic, and these children may need to have fairly specific testing done to distinguish whether or not it's true autism or a result of a defect in the X chromosome that's causing these connections in the brain to be a little bit non-functional. Early intervention can help get these children more functional and lead to better outcomes throughout the rest of their life. Rett syndrome is in fact very similar in effect to Fragile X syndrome, but is due to a mutation of the MECP2 gene that is also on the X chromosome. In this case, only females are affected because this uh, mutation is invariably fatal in males who have one copy of the X chromosome and cannot live without a functional copy. It's not typically inherited, but is going to occur as an acquired mutation after the child has already been conceived or in the germ cell line. Affected infants are going to develop normally but regress at roughly six months of age and in fact sometimes become microcephalic as the brain fails to grow and continue pushing the skull outward. Symptoms are gonna manifest again at six months of age. Language and motor delays are most commonly described, as well as seizures, breathing abnormalities, and sometimes autistic-like behavior occurring in children with Rett syndrome. Thank you very much, and I'll see you for our next talk.